Hey, sweethearts, it's Rowan, and uh, of course the lamp is going to be all weird, all weird. Paintbrush in the way, paintbrush in the way. So, okay, I have, I am watching this uh, Rachel Oates video. Um, <laughs> it's a follow up that she did to, I guess, this video she did about uh, people who drink, you know, who do the whole urine therapy thing, you know, whether they drink it or put it in their ears or various crap and stuff. And, it, you know, it's urine. It's So it's not crap, it's pee, right? So that actually reminded me of uh, something that happened one time. And because of the nature of this story time, I don't feel especially motivated to... I'm gonna take the scrunchie out because otherwise people will ask me when I cut my hair and it's like, it even happens in person, right? I put my hair back, you know, and get the twisty pins to like put it in a chignon or something and people will immediately ask me, you know, like, when did you cut your hair? I'm like, I didn't cut my hair. I can put it up sometimes. <sighs> Like, n not, n not all of us are afraid of the man bun, you know, but just... So, this is a story, and because of the nature of this story, I don't feel especially motivated to, you know, even shave and pretty myself up for the camera. But, if you might have guessed from the, uh, the, the, the Rachel Oates video, well, like I said, it's a response that she did to the responses to her urine therapy video. Apparently, uh, pee drinkers respond to my video. And speaking of pee drinkers, this is a story. This, this is one of those no shit, there I was, it really, truly happened stories about the time my younger sister drank her own urine and tried to blame me. So, when... My, uh, so let's see, my parents divorced when I was, let's see, it finalized when I was about 11, um, like just before my 11th birthday, I think, yeah. And my, yeah, because I was in fifth, because I was in fifth grade, um, just, I was just finishing up fifth grade, so it was just before I turned 11, because my birthday is in the middle of summer. And, um, and my father was the one who got custody, because Ohio in 1991, means a later-in-life lesbian is not going to get custody. <laughs> oh, God, I had a psychiatrist who said, well, that's no excuse not to get custody. I'm like, dude, this was, this was 1991 in Ohio. Trust me, it, you know, it was reason then. And then he's like, oh, that's right. You are as old as you are. <laughs> yeah, look at my file, new guy. Ah, but that's another story for another time. So... Uh, my father got custody, and he remarried eh, a little under a year later. Don't, don't act. Like, he wasn't dating anybody, but that's just how he rolled, yo. Uh, so he remarried, and we moved in with my stepmother when I was 12. So just before I started 7th grade. And she lived on a very small chicken farm in Lenaway County, Michigan. She lived on a chicken farm outside a city there. So, okay, so we moved into her home. Uh, so this was when I was, uh, so this was my freshman year of high school. This is nowhere to scale. Let's just put it that way. This makes no sense right now to me anymore. <laughs> Like, this room no mo longer makes any sense, but that house made no sense. Long story short, it was going to be the, um, oh, fuck it, that's completely unusable now. Okay, so long story short, my stepmother's ho house that we moved into, it was originally supposed to be the basement of what would have been at least another two stories, but it was on the side of a hill, you know, so there was a door that opened up into what would have been the basement. And that's a common enough design in that area um, of Michigan. And uh, let's see, so let's see. Well, the important part is my room, and then, and then there's, let's see, let's do that for a window, and then that, 
and that, and kitchen table, and we've got cabinetry here, but there's a window. So the important part is that the fridge is right here, and that's an F, and that's a T for table, and then there's a door there. So this was a really odd little house. Just So the important part is I came home from school. This was my freshman year of high school. So I was 14, and uh, my younger sister was actually held back a couple years. She's only about a year and a half my junior, but she was held back a couple years um, for various crap and stuff. So uh, one of the ways that this school district saved a little bit of money is that um, elementary school, which ran kindergarten through fifth grade, they used... Uh, they they started um, one hour later than junior high and high school, or I guess it was already called middle school at the time. Uh, but that's how old I am, right? I started going to junior high right the year when it changed from junior high to high school, or junior high to middle school, they started calling it. So, uh, so... Uh, so the junior high and the high school buses started, they started an hour earlier than the elementary school buses. So I got off the bus and I came in. So this is the front door here. So I came into the front door, doot, doot, doot. And I go to the fridge. This is a fridge, trust me. Uh, <laughs> this is not at all drawn to scale, but the impor important thing is this is my room. This is... KT for kitchen table, I suppose. Um, BR for bathroom, fridge. That's the important shit in this story, okay? Uh, well, I guess there was the front room chair and couch at some point. This, yeah, I've got, I've got things all knocking around here. This is, I'm now remembering the exact layout and... I'm a little wrong here, but <laughs> the important part is, um, is what? Is crap and stuff. Um, so, I come home from school, and I go around here, and there was no room in my bedroom to have a desk, so I did my homework at the kitchen table, you know, when I did it. Um, uh, got, got to the fridge, had myself a snack, um... Um, you know, probably bathroom and stuff. And then I started doing my homework on the kitchen table. About 45 minutes or so less, whatever, you know. So, you know, they used the same buses. That's how they would do things. Because, you know, like, the first buses would go around and pick up the junior high and high school kids and drop them off at the schools. And then would go back around to the for the elementary kids with the same buses and then drop them off at the schools. There were a few... Um, elementary schools, two junior highs, and then the one city high school. Um, if you're familiar with Illinois County, you probably know where I went to school at this point, but if you don't, then you don't. So, um, at least if you, I don't know how much has changed in the last 20, oh god, going on 30 years, what the fuck, when did I get old? Okay, so, I come home from school, do do do, snack in the fridge, maybe, maybe, you know, take a leak, and then I go and I do my homework at the kitchen table, and I think I was sitting in my father's chair because, um, no, no, this was my seat. This was my seat right here. That's where I always sat. I don't know why, just, that was just the seat I liked, um, and my dad sat here, but I did spread out. He had this habit, and I picked it up of just, like, spreading out wherever I like to sit, right? So, um, like I said, about 45 minutes, Molly, my younger sister, she comes home from school from, like, fifth grade, um, and she comes into the door, and then, so, this here, this squiggly line, that's supposed to be a window. I don't know why there was a window from the kitchen onto, this was actually a porch area, and this is the front door, so, I don't know why there's a window there when this is, like, all solid here, but, you know, whatever, that's just how they did it, so... She comes in the front door, and I see her through the window, coming through the front door, even though I heard it, too, because it was a really small house. Uh, so she comes in here, and first she comes to the uh, the cabinet. This is a cabinet, trust me. Uh, so she, first she comes to the cabinet, and then she gets a glass out of the cabinet, and then she goes back to the fridge. And I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here the whole time. 
So she gets a, a glass from the cabinet, and then she goes to the fridge, and then she goes behind me, goes into the bathroom. I audibly hear her urinating into the glass that she has filled with ice from the fridge. She comes out of the bathroom and very, very gently, very, very gently puts it onto, and I'm going to use this bottle of, uh, of vitamin gummies, and she's like, here, it's lemonade. I made you, I made it for you. And I say, and I don't even look up from my work. I'm just like, no, you didn't. You peed in that. Nuh-uh, it's lemonade. No, it's not. It's urine. I heard it. Get, just, just get, I don't know what you're doing. Uh-huh, it is lemonade. Look, I'll drink some. And then she picks up the glass and immediately starts to drink it. And then, like, not even a full, like, second and a half or so, you know, not even, like, it's, like, not even two seconds. Maybe not even one second. She just, oh, my God, that's nasty. How would you let me drink that? And I just look at her like, like, child, I, I, I don't even remember what I said. Um, you know, immediately, it took me a couple seconds to just, like, really register because, like, Every older sibling lives for a moment like this, where the younger one is just going to do something so stupid that you have no words. <laughs> and I say, if you you if you're going to voluntarily drink your own pee, I'm not going to stop you. And then she says. I'm gonna tell Alice when she gets home. And Alice being our stepmother. Now, our step and I said, you go right ahead and do that. <laughs> now, our stepmother was a social worker. Our stepmother was a social worker. Um, her specialty at the time, um, she, uh, she did a lot of classes for, uh, in, like, nutritional classes for young mothers on WIC many of whom were high school dropouts. That is another story for another time. She also did a lot of home visits. She did in the area of about, like, maybe 10 home visits a day on an average day, uh, you know, that she wasn't doing her nutrition classes. And she had one rule. She had one rule. And she, she was a Quaker, too. And her one rule was... When she comes home, give her a minimum of 10 minutes from the moment she gets in the door to unwind and remember that she is a pacifist. <laughs> now, the fact that she's Quaker isn't that important, you know, but they are, like, pretty chill pacifists, you know? If you know, like, you know, Quakers, you, you know that they're just pretty chill about things. They're, you know, pacifists, you know, they, uh... Uh, they were they were really well known um, for uh, um, uh, claiming a religious religious exemption from the draft, and at some point they just you know said okay this doesn't mean you can't enlist it just means you know we're not going to put you in combat uh, you know but you are going to enlist and we're going to find a way to make you useful so um, so yeah that is her one that was her one rule when I was in high school was you know just give her ten minutes in the door to unwind and remember that she is a pacifist. Why? When you're a social worker, you need to n remember that sometimes. So, this R here, that is my bedroom, okay? And there's a door here, and then the FD, that's the front door. So, and there was no back door. I don't know why I put front door there. There was no back door in this house, because what would have been a back door, um, actually, this was the front of the house that faced the street, but... Um, you know, so there was nowhere. This is, like, all hill. This here, like, from here, um, actually, like, it kind of, like, went up, because there was a window right here, but I just drew this all wrong, so bear with me. Bear with me. So, I'm in my bedroom by the time, by the time our stepmother comes home. I'm in the, my bedroom, just, like, reading, listening to music, whatever. I hear, um, I hear Alice, I think I had a window here, but that's, uh, I did have a window here, but that's not important. The important part was, you know, Whatever it is, I heard Alice come home, I heard a car pull up, and, you know, she parked it right about here, and then she comes in the door, and then I immediately hear Molly, and I think her bedroom was right here, but that's another story for another time when I can draw a better map. Um, 
So I hear Molly just immediately bolt out of her bedroom and, like, run through and, you know, go and, like, you know, just, like, run over to Alice. And she's like, ah, Alice, Alice, you would believe it, you would believe it. And then Ro made me drink pee. <laughs> and I, I, my bedroom door is closed. And it's almost like I could hear her face go from... Two. And then that little backhanded knock on my door. And I put down my book and I get up and I open it a crack like a teenager does. I'm like, yeah. And it's just like, did you hear what your sister said? Yeah. How did it happen? Now, my stepmother knew that I had a habit of being honest to a fault. If it would have gotten me in trouble, for some reason, the nuns had it drilled into my head that, you know, even if it was going to get me in trouble, somehow the nuns convinced me that honesty was still always the best way to go, even though at 14, I knew better. I knew that, you know, it's not so much that you're honest, it's that you say what people want to hear. That is, you know, what's going to keep you in good standing, but whatever, you know, the fact is, it's like, I still have a bit of a, ha a bit of a bad habit about that. Uh, you know, Alice knew that whatever happened, ask the informer, that was me, <laughs> it would all come out. So, I then said to Alice exactly what happened, and I'm like, no, no, she came home, and she peed in the glass, and then she told me it was lemonade, and I'm like, and then she's just like, no, look, and then, and then Alice is like, Molly, don't you ever lie to me like that again, but it doesn't end there, it doesn't end there, it doesn't end there, so, um, I want to say about another hour later, so I'm, you know, like, sitting at the chair or couch or something, snapping green beans for dinner, because, you know, you gotta pitch in with dinner, especially with a Quaker stepmother. And she's doing something else with din you know, to get dinner ready, and I... Yeah, there was a stove under this cabinet, but whatever. So, um... And there was some kind of... Okay, whatever. I'm, I, I just drew this front area really... I just drew this, this common room really wrong. So, that's all you gotta know here. So, um... About an hour or so later, like I said, you know, my stepmother and I are prepping for dinner. I can't remember what Molly was doing. I think maybe she was sent to her room... Um, but yeah, then we hear my father come home. Uh, I don't remember what the hell he was doing. Uh, he had a brain injury when I was about eight, so he didn't work a regular job. Um, he was disabled for, um, reasons that are completely different from how I'm disabled. But, so, my father comes home, and he's... Again, like with Alice, not even two seconds in the door, Molly immediately like, bolts up and runs over to my dad, coming home from whatever he was doing, probably an AA thing, so... And Molly again, like, And bro made me drink pee! And, you know, and then... I hear my dad's belt, and I'm 14 years old, but it's 1994, and, you know, whatever. And I hear my dad's belt, and my stepmother just, like, looks up and out the window, and she says, Ray, that is not what happened. And she tells my father what happened. And then, you know, he turns around, and he looks at Molly again, who was a year and a half younger, like, she just turned 13, and she's like, I didn't mean to, Daddy! <laughs> and for some reason, his reaction is just, okay. And that is how my younger sister drank her own pee voluntarily and tried to blame it on me. And that's, that, that, that I think sums her up. 
better than most other stories I have about her. The other one that sums her up really well is The Stick That Saved Christmas. But that is another story for another time. So, sweethearts, I hope you enjoyed that. Bats and kisses, and I love you all so much, and goodbye.